welcome back to the distressed princess today i am teaming up with the unicorn herself miss sammy veltry over at unicorn dust designs and we are bringing you sweet spring farmhouse diys and here are my diys for today Here is a pretty decoration I found at the Dollar General store and it was on clearance sale. So I only paid half price, so $1.50 for this really pretty picture decoration. But I'm going to revamp it a little bit using this bucket that was also half price at the Dollar General store. So I'm in it for only $4 to make this beautiful spring farmhouse decoration. My idea was to just clip this bucket right onto the board and I thought that was pretty, but I wanted it to be lower. So I'm going to move that clip down lower. It's fastened with a small screw that fits in between those little shiplap slats that are on the board. And so I'm just going to remove it and move it down to the next shiplap crack. <laughs> this way, when you put some flowers or greenery in the planter, it won't cover up the pretty wording at the top. But before we reattach the clip and put the bucket on, I wanted to remove the back of this that makes it stand up like a tabletop decoration because I'm going to add a hanger and it's going to be a wall decoration. To make the hanger on the back, I'm using jute string and a scrap piece of thin wood that I had laying around, but you could also use a popsicle stick. Next, I painted the bucket using Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white, and it took two coats. Then I reattached the clip in the next slat down of the board, which wasn't easy with my Piper head butting my hand the whole time. A Dollar Tree option for this project would be to use one of their wooden decorations and they also have these clips that are attached to like thumbtacks and you can hot glue it in place. So now I have my clip put down and my bucket can be attached. I thought the bucket needed a little something extra and since I already had wording on the board, I didn't want to put a vinyl decal or any kind of wording. So I wrapped the top in jute string, which is one of my very favorite things to decorate stuff with. And I like to do this sort of crisscross pattern on things with the string. And this is how it looks so far. The only thing left to do is fill it with some pretty flowers or greenery. And I did put a foam block inside. And this time, instead of using greenery, I'm going to use some pieces of hydrangeas that I've had sitting around. Then hold the bucket in place by using the clip and this DIY is finished and it is my favorite one out of this group today. In the next DIY, I'm using this new decoration that they have out at the Dollar Tree and these cute bee napkins that I got at one of my local stores. And I bought like four of these signs because they are so pretty just as is. I'm probably going to keep one just like it is. But this one, I'm gonna have to take apart in order to make it more neutral farmhouse. 
I started by using a butter knife to, I swear I tried to gently remove these words, but they just broke. I try to save things when I take them apart because that was such pretty wording, but it was just kind of brittle. So when I tried to slide my knife underneath that, they just broke all to pieces and they were glued on so much that it took the paper with it. And since the paper all tore up on the front, I wound up having to take it completely out of its frame anyway to try and make some repairs. And what I'm going to do next is a trade secret of Sammy Veltries. And I'm going to use brown craft paper to cover this now tore apart back part. And it's going to look finished. Just run some hot glue all around the edge and lay down your craft paper and then use a craft knife or utility knife to trim the edges. The link to Sammy's video will be in my description box below and I know she's came up with something great so make sure you check it out. Now just paint the side that used to be the back of the sign but now it's going to be the front and use white chalk paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Linen White. And this is so that when you decoupage your napkin down, it has a nice white background and none of that brown is showing through. And I only used one coat because we're going to put this napkin down on top of it. And when you use napkins, they are usually in at least a couple of layers and you'll want to peel off any of the excess layers that don't have the print on it so that you get down to the very top layer that has the print on it. Now this napkin wasn't big enough to go all the way across this uh, board. So I'm going to have to piece together some end pieces so the first thing i did was trim around the napkin to get it pretty close to this the width of the board then i painted on a thin layer of decoupage and carefully put that thin piece of napkin down on top and smooth out as many air bubbles as you can To cover those end pieces, all I did was put down some decoupage glue and then I put another piece of napkin and trimmed it off using my utility knife. And then I trimmed off all the excess napkin around the whole board. You could also put a top layer of decoupage or Mod Podge, but I didn't see the need because the napkin is so thin that it pretty much is covered anyway. Now, this part is optional. I contemplated leaving this frame its original color because I do like the light wood, but since you know, ultimately, I always wind up painting everything white. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do in this case too. And I used my Rust-Oleum Linen White and it took two coats to paint this frame. After it was all dry, just replace the top board and your pretty farmhouse decoration is all ready to go. In the next DIY, I'm going to make over this old candle jar and I liked the square shape of it and I thought it might be a very pretty vase. 
and so this jar came from Menards originally, and all it took was hot water to clean out this soy wax candle. To give it some detail, I'm going to tape off some sections and paint it in two-tone color. And I'm also going to use the baking soda method that I've seen a lot of people do, and I love it. Make sure your tape is completely pushed down on the edges so that the paint will have less of a chance to get up underneath it. The colors I'm using are Mineral from Waverly that you get at Walmart and it's chalk paint and the other color is going to be white. And I decided to put one regular layer of paint down first so that maybe the baking soda layer would have something better to stick to than just the glass. So when I mixed my baking soda with the paint, I was just winging it. I didn't look up a recipe or anything. I just put as much paint as I thought I would need and started putting half teaspoonfuls of baking soda. So let's count. I started out with maybe two and mixed it up and thought, eh, maybe a little more. I think I wound up using three, but let's count and see. Yep, three half teaspoonfuls. I guess looked like that was good enough for me, so I put that on top of my base layer. Now, Waverly chalk paint is already pretty thick, but when you add the baking soda to it, it gets really, really super thick, and so it took a lot longer to dry. Even when I used my hair dryer to speed up the drying time, I still could have stood to let it dry longer as you will see. Peeling off the tape is one of those exciting moments for a crafter. I just love peeling that tape off and seeing the crisp line. Now in this case, it was not actually the crispest of lines, but it was perfectly good enough. The next step is to tape off the part that we just painted so that we can paint the top portion with the white paint. And this is what I was talking about earlier that I could have stood to let that mineral paint dry longer because, and I was a little bit worried about this when I did this, but for time constraints and making a video, I rushed it <laughs> so that I could get this done for you guys. So I put the tape over the mineral paint and I should have waited longer for it to dry, but it's okay because you'll see how I fixed it in the end. I'm using the fabulous Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white to cover the top part of the jar. And I did two coats with just this regular chalk paint, no baking soda added. And here's the moment of truth. The peeling off of the tape reveals that yes, indeed, the mineral paint was not dry enough and some of it did come off with the tape. But don't worry because I still have that paint mixture mixed up over here to the side and I'll just patch it right up. And if anything, actually that little paint peeling up just gave it more texture anyway. The next thing I wanted to do to the jar was add a nice pretty floral stamp. And I had this really nice one of a tulip that I thought fit the jar just perfect. And for a little added touch, jute string around the top. The flowers I chose to put in the vase came from the Dollar Tree and they are called Hyacinths, Hy <laughs> uh, Hyacinth, <laughs> I looked it up, the pronunciation is Hyacinth. 
And to go with the hyacinths, I decided to add some eucalyptus greenery that I had. And this face turned out so pretty, I'm gonna have to keep this DIY for myself. The next DIY is so simple and has such a cute impact, you're going to love it. I'm using this styrofoam ball that I got on sale at Joann's, I think it was just a little bit over $1. And I'm going to cover it with hydrangeas. And these hydrangeas I've just had, it's from various stores, they're not even the same bunch. Um, and I know that they have white hydrangeas at the Dollar Tree, so if I were going to go out and buy stuff to make this, that's where I would go, is the Dollar Tree, and buy the hydrangeas there. At first, I tried just poking the stems down in the styrofoam ball, but they were not uniform in how far they were sticking out away from the ball. So then I went back and plucked them all off of their stems and I glued them all on individually and it doesn't take that long and it's really pretty satisfying. Once I got most of the ball covered in the hydrangea petals, then I wanted to add a piece of this pretty burlap lace ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to make a loop and attach it using a stapler and hot glue. With the ribbon loop attached, then I just went on applying my hydrangea petals. And before calling it done, I looked around and made sure that if there were any bare spots or any places that looked like it could be more full, I went back and added more hydrangeas. I picture this going on one of those farmhouse shelves that's got the pretty black loop hooks, so now I have to go shopping. And here's a final look at all the farmhouse DIYs today. And I wanna thank you for stopping by. I hope you all go check out Sammy Veltry over at Unicorn Dust Designs. She is wonderful at what she does and I know that you'll love her. See you next time, bye.